Hi there everyone, we're back in the Royal Society archives. Keith is on a holiday, he's gone fossil hunting, but lucky for us, he's left the keys to the vault with his colleague Rupert, so we can keep filming. And we've got something really amazing to show you today. It's all about adventure, travel, architecture, and some very interesting deaths. That's right, isn't it? It is, yes. And most of it is contained in a book on this shelf here. Is that the one? That's the one, the what? Vernon Journal. There we Manuscript go, 73. There we go. Let's find a nice flat surface and get this thing open. Let's All see. Right. So Rupert, before we even open this journal, who is Vernon? Uh, Francis Vernon was a traveller um, in the 17th century. He was a contemporary and friend of Robert Hooke. Um, he was a diplomat in Italy. And in the 1670s, he travelled further east to Greece and Turkey and onwards. We'll come back to the onwards at the end. Okay. But this is his journal of his time in Greece in the 1670s. He takes his tape measure with him. He doesn't just go to see pretty temples and pretty views. So the first thing we notice when we open this, there's some sort of letter that's been inserted in the front. What's going on here, Rupert? Yeah, this really tells how the Vernon Journal came to be in the possession of the Royal Society. And it's by via Richard Waller, who was the person who looked after Hooks rather scattered and disorganised papers on Hooke's death in 1703. Waller finds this journal among the papers of Hooke and considers it's a suitable item to donate to the Royal Society, so it eventually finds its way into the Royal Society's collections in 1709. Okay, and this is um, nearly 35 years after it was written? Yeah, the first date you see from Vernon's diary, which is what this effectively is, is 1675. And I like these Lord of the Rings style maps. Yeah, there's Mordor and there's Hobbiton. <laughs> this is actually quite a rough journal, and probably the plan would have been to work these up into more finished drawings. At the end of the voyage but as we will later find out he never got that far things don't quite go according to plan here but anyway he's getting around we see oh look we've got floor plans of temples and things like that so he's obviously filling his boots as he sees all these interesting things yeah so here we have some greek and presumably he's just transcribing this from walls and things oh, i would imagine so yeah writing page after page Obviously, I mean, we can get on a plane and go to Athens ourselves these days. So mm. is there any use to this? Like, would things be different back then from what it is now? Or? Well, it, it certainly feeds into British architecture at the time. And the sort of Greek revival boom in the late 18th century is, is being seeded by things like this. So architectural historians would certainly find a lot of interest in this journal and other slightly later works from, from classical Greece. There's more maps, more diagrams. A few of the Greek islands in there. You might recognise a few names on there. Oh, yeah. That's the um, theatre that Vernon sketches as an eyewitness account. This has been bound upside down, but there's the theatre. We've got November 1675. He's got some kind of temple floor plan there. Yeah, he miscalculates the number of pillars at first. So he's actually, he just crossed that one out in the middle. Oh, OK. A <laughs> little line through it. So we've got four there. And then he's put five there and gone, oops. Oh, no, there's only four. Yeah. It's all right. A little bit of tipex would have done the job, but mm -hmm. that'll do. This well, is... the, the other thing we have to remember is some of these measurements might have been taken somewhat covertly because there would have been um, Ottoman um, guards around some of these temples. Some of them were used with, uh, for military purposes. So here's all the measurements he's taking. We see things about walls and pillars, temples. We've got something else here you were going to show us. Yeah. What have we, this is a... This is a, well, a volume of the Philosophical Transactions, the famous journal yep. of the Royal Society. So this is volume 11. So this is a 1676 issue. So Mr. Francis Vernon's letter, giving a short account of some of his observations in his travels from Venice. So he starts off in Venice, he goes to Greece, and he writes this letter from Smyrna, uh, okay. which is now Izmir in Turkey. So yep. all those rough notes we're seeing in the journal, yep. he's turned into a letter, which has then been published in a journal. Sadly, there are no pictures in this, but there are a lot of measurements. Um, and he does the uh, latitudes of some remarkable places, Athens, Corinth, Sparta, etc. This is the bit where he reveals the falseness of the previous writer who goes to Athens, Monsieur de la Guillotière. In that book he hath written of Athens, hath made a cut of a theatre, which he calls that of Bacchus, which is a mere fancy and invention of his own, nothing like the natural one, which by the plan he has drawn of the town, I judge he did not know. Oh, so he's saying, I don't reckon that other guy's even been there. I've well, been there. I think Guillotier in his book says, my brother visited Athens, and this is what he observed, and apparently there wasn't even a brother. Okay. And Guillotier's never been there. So back to the, back to the journal, just to show this is a true journal, what have we got here, Rupert? Uh, we've got his bills. This is his expenses, is it? This is his expenses, yeah. I don't know if that says biscuit, or maybe I'm just 
yeah. I'm hungry and reading in words to it. Almonds. There's definitely almonds and salt there. Yeah. Curds. There's prices on the uh, right-hand column, so this is his sort of expense account of his journey. Okay. He's gone to Athens, he's laid eyes on these amazing things, he's kept his journal, he's written his letter, he's had mm-hmm. a paper published in Phil Trans. Yeah. What, what did he go on to do next? Well, he travels on to Smyrna. Unfortunately, he's attacked by pirates in the sea over, so a lot of the letters that he's supposed to be taking from Oldenburg to Smyrna and to Constantinople are taken by the pirates. We have proof of that here in his letter. He talks about this, doesn't he? Where does he say this? Yeah, there's this almost casual paragraph in here when he goes on from Greece. In this my journey, I had some misadventures. My companion, Sir Giles Eastcourt, died, by the way. Right. At at sea, I was plundered by the Serfiotes. That's not a word I could even Google, but apparently must have been a pirate group in the Aegean in those days. So he lost all his letters. They were all stolen by the pirates. But what happened to our man? What happened to Vernon himself? Yeah, sadly, he didn't make it back either. He got as far as Turkey, carried on east over the border from Turkey into the kingdom of Persia. I went to a place called Isfahan, which is a great ancient city now in Iran, and got into an argument over a penknife with some locals and lost that argument. (laughs) And they didn't just have penknives, they had big swords. And did him. And that was it, yeah. So we are very lucky that the journal somehow managed to make its way back to Britain and into Robert Hooke's collections. It's really sad, isn't it? All this work. And like we're touching it and looking at this work and he's so enthusiastic about it. And then he gets in a little argument over a pen knife. And yeah, I mean, he could have been one of the great sort of architectural writers writing up all these notes. It would have been a bestseller when he got back home. So if you get into an argument over a pen knife, walk away. Good lesson. Don't be deceived by this box, people. But this just happens to be the box that came in. So I'm just going to take two bulbs out of this little set. These are very simple things, as you can see. They're hand-blown glass, so you have this little wedge on the end where the glass has been snapped off. And you might just be able to see there are some labels on these ones and some little printed stamps too. 